thank you for being here. Hi, thanks for um, having me. So, uh, Julie Tariel uh, is an immigration agent for Australia. Um, who can sponsor visa applicants for the training visa 407? Okay, so the um, 407 visa, it's a different visa than the 457, first of all. And secondly, the 457 does not exist anymore. It's replaced by the TSS. But let's, let's, let's talk about the training visa. So 407, um, to be able to have this kind of visa, you need to be sponsored by an employer who has a specific uh, sponsorship for training visa. So if they have a sponsorship for the TSS visa, this one is not valid for a 407 visa. So it has to be two different sponsorship. Who could get the training visa? Basically, it's quite wild. It's quite wild because you have three options for the for uh, for this training visa, and the last option have itself three options. So it it depends on your circumstances, depends on your um, when you've been an, a student last, uh, if you've been increasing your um, skills for your career. Um, if your uh, occupation in on, is on a specific list or not for Australia, if you're an overseas student or not, so you have different options, um, but then it, yeah, it really depends on where you are in the development of your career. Who can nominate an applicant? So same, those, those employers who are accredited for the, the, who have the sponsor for the training visa. Okay, and they have to pay uh, 420? Yeah, so to, for the accreditation they have to pay 420 dollars, Australian dollars, and then they have to nominate you, and the nomination is a bit cheaper, it's like um, 100, I can't remember exactly, okay. yeah, 170, uh, and then the visa itself. Uh, how long does it take to be granted this visa? In average? That's a big question. At the moment the average is two to f between two and four months, um, however, the Department of Immigration is going through a lot of changes at the moment with the TSS uh, visa mainly and also because they are changing all their IT structure. So it can take more, but they try to keep it between two, uh, two to four months. Uh, what's the minimum uh, wage for this visa? Again, few options here because under those different options, some can be uh, on volunteer uh, basis, so volunteer job, and then the employer does not need to pay anything. Uh, but it has to be like really specific. Uh, otherwise, the employer has to follow the fair work um, legislation and pay the minimum wages. Um, is it easy to find a sponsor for this kind of visa according to your experience? According to my experience, I would say no, even if at the beginning employers are really willing to do it uh, because most of the time they think the accreditation they have for the TSS visa would work for this training visa and as soon as you tell them that they have to get another accreditation, usually they're like, oh, then we stop, we don't want to do it because the accreditation is slightly different, um, well, they still have to put the same paperwork together but they also have to put this training program and they have to show the training program in advance. And usually they're like, well, too much work for us, so they don't really bother, we need to do it. Is it the right visa for an internship? In, yeah, ideally, yes. <laughs> uh, ideally it is, uh, because it allows someone to come like for an internship on a, on a training basis while they are students. Um, and they can do volunteer job or be paid. So ideally is it, but again, especially for people who can have a working holiday because it's much easier for a company to have six months on a working holiday because with a working holiday, employers have no obligations at all. They don't need to be accredited, they don't need to nominate you, they don't need to pay for anything. So working holiday is for them easier. Um, but ideally as yes, a 407 would be the the, tr the visa for an internship. Um, okay, thank you Julie for answering all these questions and uh, see you soon. No problem, bye.